By default, all functions in Kotlin have a return type of unit. So if we create a function called say hi, that's just going to print out some text to the screen, such as hello world, and we can call it here, it actually doesn't have a return type. And then to specify a return type in, in Kotlin's functions, you're just going to, after the parentheses here, you'll put a colon, and then the type that this function is going to return. So if it returns something back, you could say it's going to return back a unit. So you'll notice at this point in time, I don't have any type of statement to tell it to return a unit or anything like that. Uh, I could do this and it would work just fine. Uh, but by default, all functions that don't have a return type return unit, which if you see the IDE, IntelliJ is saying that the unit is redundant, so I can Alt Enter or I can click on this little light bulb and say remove the explicit type declaration. So I've done that. Now to prove that it, this does return a unit, I can actually just create a variable and I'm gonna print this variable to the screen. So whatever X is here, because again, say hi, is going to return something. And because this function does not have a return type specified by default, it's actually just going to be a unit. I'll just leave that off to show you that. And since it's returning something, I can set it equal to a value. So this it's also valid to call this just like this and have it execute the function. I don't have to do anything with a return type, but if I would like to, I could actually take that, stuff it into a variable as I'm doing here into the say at to variable X and I'm gonna print it to the screen. Now, once we run this here, say hi is gonna execute, it's gonna return a unit and you can see it printed the hello world text and then it printed the type, which is kotlin.unit. So that is the unit type. And so again, if I just specify it here, unit, again, I'm not having to specify a return statement because just by default, if it's a function like this, it will return a unit. And there we go. As you can see, it returns a unit here. Now, let's say for whatever reason, we wanted to return a string though. And so you'll see here, as soon as I did that, we've got a squiggly line here. Now, what that's saying is we haven't returned any string here. So Let's say I want to return something. So let's say hello, let's just return the word hello world. So instead of printing it, let's just return it here. And it's going to return the value hello world. And then when we print it to the screen, we could say hello world, and it did go ahead and print to the screen because what happened here is the say hi function is now returning hello world. We're gonna stuff that value into this variable x and then we're gonna print the variable X to the screen with the print LN statement. So now something interesting happens. You may be thinking, well, let's just call say hi a few times here and let's see what happens. And if I run this, you'll notice that we're just going to get on the screen, hello world one time. And the reason why we're only getting hello world to the screen one time is because remember, say hi is returning something. It's returning a string. So it's not doing anything in here, but saying, hey, I'm gonna have this value and I'm going to return hello world. And at that point, you can do whatever you want with it. And in that case, we are just assigning it to a variable X and printing it to the screen. Now these last three aren't doing anything. It's calling this and it's returning hello world, but we're not doing anything with the result. So if I did val y equals this, and I did val x, you know, actually we already have x, and then we do z equals this, and val a equals this, those variables would then be set and I could actually print them to the screen as well. So we'll change these from Y to Z to A. And if we were to run this again, you're gonna see that all the values are running and printed to the screen. So hello world, hello world, hello world because we have to actually do something with those return values. Now, if I, I get rid of this right here, we're gonna see that we have an error on the screen simply because those variables have not been declared. So that's just not gonna work. It won't even compile. So this is a return type. If we wanna change return type to something else, we can say int, so it's gonna return int. And by default, this will not work. It'll say, hey, there's a problem here. And so I can return the value of 32 or something like that. And if we run this again, we can then execute it. Now, of course, because this is a function, we can say something, you know, we could put some if statements inside of here or whatever we wanted to, uh, even if we wanted to return this as a string. But we only had a integer in here, I guess say dot two string. And that would then print 32 as a string to the screen. So now whatever your return types are, which could be any of the built-in types that you've already learned, could be here. So it could be a, a Boolean value. It could be a long, it could be a double. It can be any float, whatever you're working with at that point in time. Uh, 
you will need to return that. So in this case, it would say return true and it would return that value. So you need to return whatever the value is. And of course, as we know, if we don't return anything at all, it's going to return a unit, which even if the function does nothing whatsoever, it's still going to return a unit, which then we print to the screen 